Hi and welcome to another JSO tutorial. In this tutorial we're gonna talk about defining our own model using nlpmodels.jl, another one of the Julius Mode Optimizer's tools or packages if you prefer. So in this tutorial we're gonna see a little bit more in details the NLP models package, okay? I'm gonna define uh, at least two models, maybe three, depending on the time. And uh, these models are going to be manually defined, essentially. We're going to look into what do you need to define your own model. So first, I have here the nlpmodels.jl documentation. You can, you can go here in the uh, GitHub repository and click on Docs Latest. And this is the documentation. And I want to show you two things here. The first thing is that an NLP model is a description of a problem in this format. I'm minimizing, I'm sorry, here. I'm minimizing a function f of x with constraints, which are between a lower and upper bounds, and uh, bounds on the variables. So this is a way of defining the problem that defines problems like this one here in which you have equality and inequalities separately in nlp models and on other packages we use this description okay so this is inherited from qtest okay so this is what we're going to provide today okay so we have to create something like this and second I want to show you the attributes. So every NLP model has a lot of attributes which you have to, to define. A few of these attributes are automatically created, but you have to define the number of variables, bounds, starting point, usually you want to define that, here are the bounds, and you want to define a few uh, constraints properties. Okay, so the number of constraints, Maybe if you have linear and nonlinear uh, constraints, you want to explicitly define that. And here, L-cone and U-cone, the bounds on these constraints, okay? So this is what you want to, to provide. Okay, so let's get to it. Let me zoom a little bit more. Yeah, this is better. I'm going to remove the header. So the first thing is uh, NLP model has to be a concrete type of the type abstract NLP model. So we're going to create a struct for that. Let's say that we're going to define this problem here, which is a generalization of Rosenbrock. So let's call this extended Rosenbrock. So our model extended Rosenbrock has to derive from the abstract NLP model, which is inside NLP model scale. I have already used it here. Uh, but anyway, and we need two things for a model to be well-defined. First, we need a meta type which is an NLP model meta. And second, we need the counters. So this counter, this is a counters type. So these counters are gonna be, uh, are gonna be an internal storage of how many evaluations of the objective function, gradient and such that you may need. In addition, you may have some additional information that is useful for your problem. Here, extended Rosenbrock doesn't need anything else. The number of variables is going to be inside the meta. And that's it. That's the only thing that I need. So meta and counters are both mandatory in one way or another. So here is the first definition. So if I say extended Rosenbrock is not going to work, I need something more to define this problem, which is a constructor or something that 
could be named a constructor in Julia. And what I'm going to do is if I call the function extended Rosenbrock with a value n, so I'm going to use 10 by default, n equals 10. And what I'm going to do is define this, uh, the properties of this function. I'm not going to define this function yet. And for that, I need to define an NLP model meta. So the number of variables is n. The starting point, let's see if the multidimensional starting point is provided here. So, uh, no, there's a local minima here. It looks like there's no defined starting point, so let's define our own. Given the problem, this is essentially a bunch of Rosenbrock functions chained together. Let's define it to be minus 1.21, minus 1.21, and so on. Okay, so this is, is going to be, I'm going to define it here, something like this. But of course, I have to do this for n values. So this is going to be i is equal to 1, or sorry, i is divisible, uh, is not divisible by 2. Then it's going to be 1.2, otherwise 1, for i from 1 to n. So 1 is going to be minus 1.2, 2 is going to be 1.0, and so on. So this is our x0. I don't have lower bounds, so I don't need to define L var. I don't have upper bounds, I don't need to define U var. I don't have constraints. I... I don't need to pass anything else for now. Okay, so for now, let's assume that's all we want. Okay, and what we are not passing that, it's in, that is important is the number of known zeros on the hashing. Okay, we are not passing that for now. The second thing that we want I ran this, but I do not want to run it yet, is the counters. And now we can return an extended Rosenbrock with meta and counters. And let's do it. Uh, oh, sorry, this is x0 equals. Okay. The only mandatory argument is the number of variables. So this is our Rosenbrock, okay? Uh, you can see here I have this printing, it's a new printing. We actually have a, a new printing on the way. It's gonna have a few blocks, but you can already see all this information here. The total number of variables is 10. I have 10 free variables, no lower bounded, no upper bounded, no lower and upper bounded, no fixed variables. And the number of known zeros on the Hessian is 55. If I do not provide, it's going to assume that I'm going to have a dense Hessian. This is important. If you ever call a, a, um, a solver that uses the Hessian, you have to provide the NNZ age correctly and, of course, define the function for the Hessian. Okay? So now that we have defined the attributes of our model, let's define the model. So the easy part here is the objective function. First, we're going to define the objective function. The number of variables is going to be nlp.meta.nvar. Always call it meta, okay, please, because other functions depend on this being named meta. n equals nlp.meta.nvar. And my function is going to be essentially this sum right here. It's a sum of x i 2i minus 1. 
minus 1 square plus 100 times x2i minus x2i minus 1 square square for i equals to 1 going to by 2 up to 2 up to n minus 1 okay so let's check that it's working nlp at a well let's see that our starting point is well defined well we have to define nlp first of course here our nlp is well defined our starting point the objective for sorry the objective value at the starting point it's gonna go bad because because yeah this is not defined correctly i'm jumping one tree so this is actually if i'm gonna use the, the, this definition this is actually just i and i plus one i semi copy pasted the thing that's okay this is live coding so here instead of what i just wrote i'm gonna have i i plus one And here so the objective function at that point is 121 I, well I hope that's correct I do know though that if all the points are equal to 1 okay, 1 here is gonna be 0 and 1 1 is gonna be 0 as well so if I call once NLP meta and var it should be 0 and it is 0 okay so remember obj here is part of the nlp models api so you have to define it for any solver that uses the objective function which is most of the solvers okay so if you call the other methods for instance grad it's not gonna work because you have not defined it yet notice that grad calls grad exclamation mark Okay, because internally, if we if you do not define grad, it will call grad exclamation mark. Uh, but if you do not define grad exclamation mark, it's gonna fail. So let's define grad exclamation mark. Please, anyone, feel free to ask, ask questions in the in the chat here at slack at sorry here in the chat at twitch okay so here grad exclamation mark has this signature of course you can look into the help for some information on that uh, i don't use my help very much so i don't remember where it is it's probably gonna be in the api the aptly name api of course so here i have the api the basic api nlp model function so if you look into grad exclamation mark you have here okay this is also the help of course so you can just help it so help me obi-wan okay so you have it here there's also something else internally you can ignore this part but, uh, actually i should leave it there for future reference uh, undo delete cells here so okay i have to define the gradient and here is where the fun start i have to differentiate this function and if you look at the values uh, for a given i you're gonna notice that i always only use xi and xi plus one for a given i so if i differentiate this with respect to xi being one of these i'm gonna have a term here and a term here and i differentiate it with respect to xi plus one where i is one of these again this is going to be zero and I'm going to have something from here. 
So let's do that. So my vector g is going to be used for all values, so I do not need to uh, empty it first. So I'm going to do it this way. So I can look at i and i plus 1, the way I mentioned. I'm, the, I'm uh, differentiating this part. Let me write what I'm differentiating. If I differentiate this, I'm going to have this. And the second part is going to be the differentiation, the derivative of this. So this second part, when I differentiate with respect to xi, is going to be minus 400 times xi times this monstrosity here. Notice that this is going to appear another time. So I'm going to call it alpha equals this. Here I'm differentiating uh, this guy with respect to x i plus 1. So this is going to be 200 times alpha, which I'm going to write as 200 alpha. Okay, so this is one example of why you would want to define your own derivatives, a very simple one. You can see here that I'm making a very small uh, reuse of this value. Of course, if this value were very expensive to compute, you'd want to store it and reuse it. So here it is not the case. So the same way I'm going to define xi, for instance. And I can do this. Okay, and it's a little bit more cost efficient. Always return the, the thing that you're computing. Of, uh, in this objective value, this is obvious. But for the gradient, please return the, the gradient as well. Okay. And now, if I keep running these guys, this is going to be the same, except for this gradient. The gradient at NLP, NLP meta, sorry once nlp meta n var should be zero which is the optimum value for extended rosenbrock okay so here i defined objective and gradient for a model so freeman asked me why not just use automatic differentiation you could actually in this case i'm just showing how you would go on defining manually your method if you don't want to use or can't use automatic differentiation for, for some reason. Uh, in this case, for instance, I'm not sure if the automatic differentiation will get this, but it will probably get this. But in my example, I'm saying I'm storing xi and alpha efficiently, so it could be faster. It's not going to be the case for these models, okay? But suppose you want to define your own functions. Uh, this could also be true if you define this. This problem can easily be defined by jump. So you can define this here using jump. I think I, I made some examples with this a couple of days ago. I'm not sure. So you can define this with jump as well and use NLP models jump to obtain objective and gradient. But for some models, for instance, when you have a vector valued function, or a lot of those, and then you can't use jump efficiently. So this is one reason to use the explicit way. Okay. And and by the way, we automatically have automatic is not the word. We have by default, yeah, we have by default a DNLP model. So I'm gonna call it a DNLP, which is exactly that so some does it exist so, so some here is the sum comma x zero this
There you go. So I forgot to define n. That's a new error up there. Is argument missing from both? I'm not sure what this is. Let's hope it's nothing. So here I have that AD and LP. It's defined by a function and a starting point. And this AD and LP does the same thing here. So here I can say objective of AD and LP as well. And the gradient of AD and LP. Okay, well, this is terrible, but okay, they are the same. So in this case, I can do that. The difference is going to come for the Hessian. Can you benchmark time then? Uh, yeah, I could. Let's do that. I uh, don't have benchmark tools, do I? No. Nope. There you go. Let's. I'm not sure how benchmark tools work on notebooks. I think I have to do. I'm going to define x0 here. Is this it? Yeah. And ADNLP. Let's run again to make sure. So if I use the NLP, which I defined explicitly here, okay, it's gonna take uh, 53 nanoseconds and one allocation only. I believe this allocation may be because of the G I have internally. Let's leave this for now. And in the ADNLP, I'm gonna have uh, nine times that, okay, and some allocations that involve what I did internally. So if I predefine, okay, that oh, I forgot exclamation mark. If I pre-allocate the output, yeah, it, it decreases a little bit on time. I have no allocations here and four allocations here. So since I have the objective and the gradient, I should be able to use a BFJS method. So I'm gonna use JSO solver. So remember that I have this starting point and I'm gonna call LBFGS with my NLP and that's it. Okay, I hate that this is not a, a pretty printing here because of the of the of the notebook in the terminal it looks much better so i'm gonna remove the logging yep and i'm gonna just print the solution so here i ran lbfjs in this new extended rosenbrock and now I have a first order stationary, the objective function is zero, dual feasibility is almost zero, and the solution is almost one as well. So can you benchmark that as well? Yes, I can. Let's do that. Um, can I benchmark inside no logger? Let's test. So I'm going to be time this and this does this work so so amazingly it's a little bit slower on the first case so it doesn't make that much difference 
Interesting. It took nine milliseconds to solve this. Let's run again to make sure. So the problem with benchmarking online is because it takes a little time. So yeah, it's essentially the same thing. That's that's interesting. I'm not sure why though. So the method is the same. So probably the difference is how do you say is not significant inside the method because the 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 most expensive operations are much more expensive than just calling the gradient. That's why. That's my on the fly answer to that. So what really matters here is the the internal uh, computations he made. So what I want to do is only check one thing that won't work. I already know this won't work. I want to show a simple thing that we are missing so far. So I'm gonna just print NLP and print a DNLP. So I ran LBFJS on this NLP that we defined and I ran LBFJS and this ADNLP that we defined. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm ignoring the output after this. Um, I'm resetting NLP and resetting ADNLP. I actually don't need the output here, so actually I can just remove it. When I print the NLP here, we can see one big difference, the counters. So when I ran LBFJS with the ADNLP, I used 52 function evaluations and 45 gradient evaluations. But I haven't used any evaluation with my extended Rosenbrock model because I am not keeping count. Okay, so here one thing that I have to do to make sure that I'm keeping count is increment this counters so this is a function called increment by the way it's nlp models dot increment uh, you can always import these functions but i prefer to leave it clean here inside the notebook and now that i've that i'm incrementing it I can see that it's keeping score at the same uh, the same values. Okay, so going back with my original plan here, I showed for now just a quick review. I show how to define the objective and the gradient of a model, extended Rosenbrock that we define above. And I'm showing that this model, which we defined, can be called with other functions that we already have. For instance, the lbfgs solver it's called here and i'm showing that it has the same properties as this nde nlp model that i have uh, you can see here as well it's printing extended rosenbrock and here is printing all these ad nlp model with automatic differentiation okay you can see which is which